Hey friends, Mike Myers here with the Songwriting for Guitar podcast episode number 43, Student Success Story with Neil Turk. Now I run an online class called Riff to Radio. This helps songwriters enhance their guitar skills so they hit the mark more with their songwriting and they get those songs done and out into the world. And Neil was a student of Riff to Radio and seeing his growth from the beginning to now is like a 180. He already had the mindset and the drive to do it, but Rift Radio gave him even more skills to hit that mark more consistently over and over. He has blossomed into an amazing producer to get songs done for his own artist projects, but now starting to help others in the co-running sessions that he has. He's been releasing music from other artists, and I wanted to bring him on to hear his journey and how Rift Radio has helped him. So we're gonna take a listen to it right now. I'm so excited. Episode number 43, Neil Turk. Neil, thanks for being here, man. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm honored that you asked me to be on your show, man. Well, well, you know, I know you from, you know, we've been Facebook friends, you know, Facebook friends for a while. And then you took Rift to Radio. And then I saw you just like, you can tell when someone takes information that's going to run with it and apply it because it's one thing to consume because I, there are people that take courses and courses they consume and they go well i'm going to take another course i'm going to take another course and it just seems that their tail is just a never-ending journey of like courses and then <laughs> there's never like and it's like well what are you doing with it uh, i'm there's a course i'm about to take, and i'm like <laughs> yeah. are you gonna do anything with it and you just like immediately out of the gate just started doing it and started like, okay, I'm going to record better guitars. I'm going to arrange better guitars. I'm going to start doing this for myself. And I'm going to start. And then you just started releasing songs. And then you were starting to help other people release songs. And you were starting to produce songs and you were starting. And the quality of what you're producing too is really good. Oh, thank you. Like extremely good. Like the level of sonic quality, when you go in between you, AB something that you hear on Spotify and a playlist, it's like, it's, it's really good. Thank you. I know I have a long way to go, but it's 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 getting there. Every every song is I could it's getting there, you know. And I think, you know, th I, that's what I want to talk about, because for so many people, that is, a, you know, as I said before, like kind of a chasm. It's a jump for some people to think about playing a song live, but let alone recording themselves, let alone then starting to mix a song, then being like, oh, I'm going to release this thing that I've done pretty much all myself. They just don't. You know, when it comes to music, what was your entryway into writing too? And then let's cross into all those steps that led to you now just like producing yourself, other people, releasing that music. So starting from the beginning? Yeah. I want to know. What okay. was the thing that got you into it? Okay. And just into playing music. So I would say I was probably around 15 or 16 and me and my cousin, Anthony, got turned on to Green Day. Dookie. Never heard, yeah. you know, you know, we didn't know anything like that before. And I, I'm sure this is a story for a lot of people hearing Dookie. I can remember being in grade school and stuff and not, I went to a really small Catholic school, um, like, like probably under 20 kids. I, and I feel like maybe rap was more the the thing there. I wasn't even allowed to listen to rap growing up. So like, I couldn't really like everyone was allowed to listen to Snoop Dogg, Warren G. I literally was not allowed to have that in the house. You know, I could never, so early on, I couldn't find my place, like what music I liked. And, you know, I do remember like. I think eighth grade getting a Snoop Dogg single, like what's my name? And it was like the edited version. I was allowed to have that tape, but seriously, super strict. So I didn't know, you know, what I was into. And then Green Day came along all of a sudden and like Weezer. And um, I, well, I think gr mainly Green Day was the biggest gateway into everything else. Like all the other punk bands I end up hearing, no effects and all that. But, um, but I, yeah, I started getting into rock music around, I was, yeah, seventh, eighth grade, I think. And um, just trying to find my, what what's my music you know and then i don't know a couple years later um we were getting super into green day and me and my cousin would set up like a uh it's embarrassing because there's videos of this like an old vacuum cleaner with the microphone taped on we did a cardboard cutout of billy joe's guitar with with the writing like bj and all, like a, a cardboard guitar yeah Spray, sprayed our hair wore dog chains and then my cousin's on pots and pans and we're singing along to green day filming this and like literally this exists somewhere and thank God it's not the digital age anymore because it's like a, one tape somewhere maybe. But we were like so into music, you know, we just we wanted to be like them. It's like, what's this Green Day stuff, you know? So and then on Christmas and I can't remember the years, but I want to say I was around 15. I got my first electric guitar. He got a, uh, a drum set and we had to go down in the basement and help 
set up for the family get together, like bring up chairs. We go downstairs, there's a drum set, a PV Falcon guitar and a little amp. And that was the beginning of it. We immediately started playing music. We didn't know. We both are self-taught. We just like, hey, let's start a band. Like that day we were a band and we just started writing songs. And, I mean, trying to write songs and trying to sing and play. And and then that was the beginning of it. And then I just kept getting farther into punk stuff. And from Green Day, it just led me into all this. I can still remember hearing no effects, hearing Fat Mike's voice at first. I'm like, God, his, his voice is so it's kind of weird. But then you get used to it. And then I realize I definitely go in that <laughs> range sometimes. But, uh, but that's, like I said, it just opened up a whole world of me. And that's where I found like my like this is me man this is the kind of music that makes me like happy and i just started playing in punk bands and i've been doing that for over 20 some i don't know 20 years now i can relate to it because number one i went to a catholic school and i remember hearing dookie for the first time and i was like holy shit this is like there was something about it that i really loved and you know everyone eventually moved on to hootie and the blowfish and i was like yeah. i don't like this i, I don't really you know only want to be about your who and i'm just like <laughs> this is totally different from green day how did you guys make that that switch i just <laughs> didn't i didn't get it but it, i think your kind of pretending was also just like the imagination of like oh this is kind of possible and it was just the only way that you could just do it in that moment. Yeah. Because, you know, when you listen to bands that are like classic rock bands that are like, blah, 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 it's like, I, you know, you don't hear about somebody like, oh, and I pretended I was Led Zeppelin. Yeah. But there's something about punk rock that's very attainable. Uh, yeah. Like you mentioned Fat Mike. I love the Mr. T experience, but like Dr. Frank, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. his voice is not for everyone. Yeah. It's like, you know, I remember I was like, yeah. And, you know, I've had him on the podcast. People are like, yeah, I don't like it. And I'm just like. Really? I was like, there's just something that I was just drawn that I loved. Now you're doing this. So you're in punk bands, punk bands, punk bands, punk bands. At what point, especially did you realize there are some players that after a while they dig their heels in and they go, I'm good where I'm at. And they get very defensive and, and, and they don't mean to, but I think it's just either they think like it's an attack on their background or how they grew up or, you know, what they were influenced. And it's not that at all. It, it's just like, but there are some people that really dig their heels in. You, however, were really receptive to, oh, there's more. And that's cool. I am into other stuff other than punk and playing other stuff. But really, for my comfort zone still is, honestly, is doing that. Like, yeah. even, you know, like, that's just my, I always still fall back on that. I, you know, I went off and started doing acoustic stuff and playing harmonica years ago, which I still do that. But it's like campfire style. But it, it's like, it sounds like, when a punk guitarist, you know how plays guitar and harmonica, I'm campfire strumming. Yeah. Um, I I don't feel, but what I'm working towards now is when I do work with other people in different genres, it that gets me out of my comfort zone. I, you know, it's definitely more of a challenge and a struggle, but my comfort zone, even to this day, still is, you know, I'm in the process of getting a, a band going now for all these songs I released, but it's all kind of punk stuff. But I still have so much learning to do with other other stuff, but I just keep, I still kind of fall back to the rock, you know, always. <laughs> Which is totally fine. I, I guess, you know, how did you make that jump to know like, oh, there's a little bit more I need to know about this instrument, even though I've been doing this for so long. Were there things that you realized along the way or when you would see and you were like, I need to do I'd like to do that or you felt like you hit a wall? Yeah, I think maybe. That like like you said before, even before I joined your class, like you know, you talk about hitting when you talk about you just hit a wall, like you know, and I kind of felt like that, not overwhelming, but I I definitely had little feelings of that, and mm -hmm. it's like well, I need to open my mind more and, and learn a little bit more, but um, I don't know if there was like I can't remember what when that moment was, but that you know, it definitely gets to a point where it's like well, I definitely can learn more, and like I said, even. I have so much to learn right now, <laughs> but it's just being open to that and just having an open mind about it now. And I still, still have, and I have so long to go, you know, with that. And that's what's exciting though. You never, ever stop learning with anything you do. And that's, what's, you know, really cool. What was your big, big aha moment when you started to kind of delve in, you were expanding your skills when you were putting into practice, what was a big like light bulb moment? I'm like, Oh shit. Like this is starting to come through in what I'm writing and recording. A moment for me, I think that happened. Um, well, let me just explain what happened with quarantine. When all that stuff happened, I lost my bartending job. And at that time, I was taking songs like demos I was recording at home and taking them to, to other producers and paying, you know, good. I mean, a decent amount of money for that. But when then when quarantine hit this year, whatever, a year and a half ago, um, I was like, well, I can't afford to do this anymore. And I was yeah. already at the point where I was 
doing a lot of the song, like most of it at home and then taking it to someone else, like to help me like towards the, but then I'm like, I just can't afford, I can't spend even if it's three, 300 bucks, I just can't justify doing that anymore. And that was like, well, I need to figure this out myself and go from just doing demos. Like, you know, I didn't feel any of the stuff I did before that I could even think of releasing. My mindset wasn't even close to being there yet. It was just like, I just do almost done demos and I take it to someone else and they push, push me past the finish line. And I mean, an aha moment for me, Actually, like and it relates to when I was taking Rift Radio and you turned me on to some, and I think I told you this before, when you turned me on to STL Tones, I honestly think that was when I was just starting to change. And because I remember I just released my first song um, that I did on my yeah. own, and it was for my now wife, Caitlin. And back then, you know, it was, but it's called Caitlin. That was a, and that was the last song that I actually mic'd my Fender amp in my closet. And I spent so much time and finally got to the point where I'm like, I'm putting this out. But it was right around that point is when I was doing the course and then you would open my eyes to STL tones. And then that led to um, the, you know, the John Feldman pack. And then that actually led with, I'd already been using easy drummer for years. I had also found out he put out a producer pack for easy drummer. And, and then all that to me, because then shortly after that, I think I put out like lights out in the city. And that was still one of my, I'm so proud of that song, but that was, just just even the SDL tones being turned on to that, like it took my my recording to another level, getting those bass tones because that was something I struggled with at home. It's like, how do I get these good bass tones? How do I get these good guitar tones? And it was a struggle, man. And that was half the reason I didn't have confidence to put stuff out. It's because it just it just I couldn't get good tones. And that really opened my <laughs> eyes up to I was like, holy shit. And I bought all these producer packs and then re- but to me that was a turning point. And then all I think all the songs have gotten better, 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 better from that moment on. So that to me was like an aha moment. And just, you know, keep learning. I keep learning about plugins and all the, the stuff that you can do now in the box. But that was a moment that stood out to me. So I'm like, God, man, had I not taken your class and heard about STL tones, I don't know. I might have been trying the same stuff I was back then still, but everything happens for a reason. And that was a moment that was a turning point for me. And I feel, especially with punk. You know, I, I'm always listening for like guitar parts in all songs. I can't help but geek out and like listen. And the clarity in your palm muting, the clarity oh. in all your, and I mean that sincerely because oh, it was just you. like, I'm always like, people are always kind of like, oh, punk music. And I'm like, yeah, I was like, but you try to throw on a metronome at like 155 and you give me, <laughs> give me some clean palm muting. If you can do that, then cool, <laughs> I'll be quiet. But if you're going to poo poo on punk, I want you to sit down. I want you to palm mute this. Can't people's hands like stiffen up and they're like, ah, and they're speeding up against the click. They're fighting it. You got so good at locking in with the metronome. And I, I know when we, we first talked, you were like, oh, that's a thing. You know, like I, I never practiced with metronome. But as soon as you started doing that, that cleans up so much. Yeah. It's, it's just like, for some some people, they're like, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. A metronome it has the human feel, but it's like, how would you say from an editing standpoint, as you started to get into like, you know, starting to dice your, you know, you know, cut your guitars and, you know, paste here and like start to edit them. How was your timing like uh, locking in more and more? I would say much better. I mean, I could take another part from another part of the song and <laughs> copy it onto it. You know, if, if, if needed, if, if there was a, yeah. something, I was like, damn it, there's this part that's this mistake or pop or something i can't fix it's like well i could always take that from the verse because i was i was playing it on time you know i obviously with midi we can just quantize it but yeah, yeah my guitar parts enough that i'm like you know they were they were so so damn close that it's like if it got to the point where i needed to take apart from another part um another section i could just paste it right on there and it works just and that's how you could tell that all right these are on time you know what on time to my <laughs> drums that are quantized but quantized you know but um so that that's where it really shows that you can do stuff like that with the editing and it's much easier that way you know, I remember being a, you know, one of my first bands, we went to a studio and we totally did not track to a metronome and it was just being, it was so hard to know, like, okay, so the vocal, there's a break. You have to count to like five, but say five really fast. Cause then, <laughs> then your vocals kind of, and it just, it just, it messes with your head because have you just had just like a normal, like, oh, okay, easy to keep track of. And then you can focus instead like this weird, like one, two, three, four, five, and then yeah. <laughs> immediately go in. But when did you start to also, as you started to put out these songs, you know, you're putting out your own music and you're 
put it, you're getting your skills in general when it comes to your guitar, your songwriting, everything is starting to go up. When did you start to think about collaboration with other people that may have been out of your, you know, even out of your genre of what you write? Well, the, definitely that's with Jody right from Rift Radio, you know, um, <laughs> you know, initially, you know, just I laughed because when I I saw her post about, hey, I need help, you know, writing the song. And I was like, I don't know, I'll just reach out for the hell of it. You know, it's you know, I expected nothing. And um, it turned out to be like a year and a half later, we're still doing stuff together. And like, like a lot, lots of time and love has gone in into her stuff and with her and just like we, you know, teaching her how to use logic and stuff. And But it's like, I had no idea when I just saw that post in your class, like, oh, it's just, you know, but it was, it's just, you know, I try to keep an open mind and just, I find myself trying to just say yes to more situations. And like, that was one where it's like, Oh, let me just see you. And, you know, now we have a really great relationship and I've, I mean, it's definitely real challenging, uh, you know, cause her stuff is very different and she's still finding her sound and helping her do that. And it's not punk. Um, so, you know, yeah, I just had to keep an open mind with it and I'm, you know, and I feel like the next batch of songs, everything with, even with her is going to keep getting better and better. And, it's that's a, it's been a great learning experience, but that that was when I first collaborated. I would say like as far as producing goes, but I started doing some co-writing when we were doing yeah. Kathy's um uh what the hell's it called the, the same course stuff. that we had going on. That yeah. was the first time I'd ever even heard of like co-writing and stuff, and that was when I had started to do some actual co-writing with people. But at that point, I couldn't produce anything. I hadn't. I still in demo, you know, doing my demos and stuff, but. So all that stuff even started with the sync, taking that, that course and just like starting to like, cause I'd always done everything my entire life. Like I'm the, I'm the only songwriter I do it. This is my stuff. That was kind of what I always did. And then yeah. that even back then with the sync writing was when it, I started just opening my mind and sitting down with other people and trying to write together. And then sitting down after your course, sitting down with Jody and trying to produce stuff with her. And now I have other people are organically starting to come to me now and I'm starting to get some work now, which is really cool. That's a and you are because you're you put together EP. You guys have been writing, and now it's like you're slowly building a clientele of people yeah. that are now coming. Because, but I love the fact too that you're helping her build her skills as well. Th that's the sign of a good co writer because I feel like it's a shared kind of like you're sharing the information, they're sharing stuff that they're learning. There, it's, it's a mutual exchange, it's not like one hoards or protects. Yeah. I feel when someone totally is digging the shit that they're doing and they're growing, they want to tell everyone about it because like how their perspective changed. They're like, Hey, once you know this, this is going to help you do this thing. They're constantly trying to help as many people as possible while still doing the thing as opposed to trying to protect it and be like, yeah. Oh no, 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 no. I can't tell you what this is. It's a secret. Yeah. <laughs> so right now too, what would you say your how your process has changed when you go to record a song compared to when you did demos? Well, now I I, I walk into stuff knowing I'm gonna like release. It's gonna be, get released. Um, I feel like I'm getting to the the end quicker. Like I'm just I'm working yeah. on a song yesterday with a new song with uh, another guy, and uh, I mean I already got the drums pretty much ready to go now. Like I'm I'm getting places faster now like i'm already i'm already throwing the stuff a couple things on my master bus that i know i need um you know just i'm set, i'm able to set up things quicker um you know i told you i'm addicted to plugins you know and so i, <laughs> I get my plugins I'm, and i'm into soft tube and stuff now but um but uh i'm getting quicker like just realizing what what i need for each situation now and yeah um I, i'm just finding myself getting a lot quicker already but it's like i already know coming into this um well, this is going to be released. Somebody's going to, you know, they're going to like, this guy's going to put out, I just did it. My buddy, Robbie gold. We just did a song called innocent bystander. And then now he had a, one of his friends wrote a song and, and he's like, Hey, now I want to do another song with you. And now and then he's going to do another one. So, um, but like now I already know it's like, these aren't just demos. So I'm going into it, my mindset's different. It's like, so, it's, you know, I got to make this as, as best as I can. And so going into it right away, it's like, I know this is going to be something that we're going to put out and, um, like I said, I, I just feel like the sessions are coming together quicker. I love that because it's very intentional now. Yeah, it's very intentional. It seems like there's purpose behind it where I think sometimes people, when they write a song, they're just like, "Yay, we wrote a song. And it's like, cool. <laughs> w w what's the, what's, what is this song going to do? 
Is anybody yeah. <laughs> going to release it? Are we pitching this? What What's going to happen? So to go into the right automatically and know, okay, so this is what's going to happen. I have a feeling, a vibe of what this is. It's almost like because you you are now taking on a producer hat of just like, okay, so what's the landscape of the song supposed to be? You're, you're aware of that. So as the song's being written, it's just like, okay, so let's remember this, is what we're trying to do with it. So let's, let's keep on course because there has to be somebody steering it. Yeah. Now, if someone's listening to this and they were like, this is all well and good. Uh, but you know, I'm just not the, I'm, I can't do this. I can't do this. Like, you know, I'm, what would you say to someone or someone like yourself that was starting out that was like, oh, there's no way, you know, or just like, I'm not sure I can do this. What are some simple steps to to move in that direction where maybe they don't produce, but like they're starting to the benefits of what you said of tracking things yourself and doing a lot of this as opposed to here's three hundred dollars for this song. Here's four hundred dollars yeah. for this song, which is all good and well. But when you want to create a lot of songs. It can get expensive. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's expensive. <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing I would say is um, now, if I can go back, it's like, don't wait for things to be perfect um, mm. because they're never going to be perfect. Every mm. song I do, I mean, that's the the other, I'd say the one, one of the downsides is you're your own worst critic about stuff. Like, man, boy, do I analyze stuff and I have to let stuff go um, yeah. with songs and little mistakes that nobody in a million years would ever notice except me. You know what I mean? And like, so everything is going to get like, don't wait till you're like, oh, this is perfect. Now I can put it out. Like just start putting stuff out. And like, you're supposed to hear the progression. It's supposed to, if you listen to my first song from your go to now, of course it's better. And if if it's not getting better, then you're not doing something right. But of course, but you got to start with those like shitty ones too. And like it, death expected. And at least you have the balls to put something out. Think of how many people don't have, they don't have anything released in their entire life i've never put one song out and like you know dude i don't care if i get like 15 listeners a month on i don't give a shit i'm still putting out music and it's like it's an accomplishment it's it's something it's like uh, my songs are my baby so just had another kid just had another, you know and it's not about how many people hear it but it's about starting something and finishing it and then once it goes out in the world it's done and it just starting that process but if you never if you wait for something to be perfect you're never even going to do one song so so just put it out there and just have fun with it and try not to overthink it and which i'm still working on right now so that's that's advice i would give (laughs) me too i'm still trying not but you're right you should see some progression there should be a form of like i remember like it was a couple of months ago i was thinking of there was this one song that I did with this artist. We've done a couple songs now. And I'm like, they're great. I'm like, we never finished this first one. And I'm like, why? And the melody was in my head. And I opened up the Logic Project file. And I looked at it. I was like, oh, I know why. I was terrible at production when we started this. <laughs> this was awful. And it was just like, because it was terrible. I could see things pee. And it was like, it sounded like shit. And I was like, well, what's happened since like, that was like three years ago to now? Oh, there was like 200 something songs and I got way, (laughs) way better. And you're right. Sometimes you just have to put it out. And I think people are waiting it for that perfect moment. And there is no perfect moment. There is always going to be something that you're going to see and be like, "Ah, it needs to be better. Yeah. That's what the next song is for. Always. That's what the next four, the song's for. Um, No, I love this. So what, what do you have in the works right now? So you're working on more songs with Jody. You've got a band that you're putting together and all these songs you've been releasing during quarantine, which is awesome because so many people spent quarantine just being like, well, I can't do anything. You did the fucking opposite. And you were like, I'm putting out this song. I'm putting out this song. And you just started to put out songs consistently all the time. (laughs) Uh, Well, quarantine, dude, I mean, for me, it was like, this is one of the best years of my life, to be honest with you. Um, I, I lost my, it all started losing my bartending job of like, I've been doing this 17 years and I got a license in real estate now, which never would have done that would have never started releasing my own songs because I would have, when I was consistently working, it's like, okay, here and there, I could afford to do a song here and there. Um, but quarantine forced me to do stuff out of my comfort zone. And like I said, start looking back, like forcing me into a a, a different career. And then, you know, I'm still going to bartend and stuff too, but it's like, now I have a real estate license. Never in a million years thought I could have done that, but I studied, did that. Um, it forced me to have to have, sit at home and have time to work on music and work on my production. Like, so this, this year has been an awesome year and it's like so many first times for me I learned how to play tennis. Now I play tennis every week. Like so many great things came out of this year and I know it's been, it's a right, it's a, a rough year for a lot of people. And you know, 
I, I, I feel really blessed and lucky that I was just able to run with everything that happened. And it's like, I'm coming out of this a better person, a better musician. And um, so, but, but all these songs that I, I uh, had worked on during quarantine, you know, I was getting to the point where I'm like, shit, I don't need to work, play with other people anymore. You know, like I was, oh, I was starting to love just doing things alone and all that. And then, you know, cause I'm a little bit of a recluse, you know, I like going out too, but I, I have no problem staying at home all day, every day if I have to. And I could, cause I could work from home. I could do the yeah. music. I could be on the, doing a real estate deal and then go right to start working on a song right at the same time, you know? So I like staying around, you know, st- sticking around the house and stuff, but I was starting to think I don't need other musicians anymore. I'm playing all my own parts, programming my drums. But, um, but then recently, you know, I, I actually walked by a house in, in my neighborhood and I could hear a, a guy drumming in the basement playing live music. And I've done this like twice now. I'm like, man, I kind of miss like playing, playing with people again, you know? And it, it just on it naturally came back to me. It went from like, I'll probably never play a live show again. I don't care anymore to naturally. I'm like, oh, I'm kind of interested in, in doing this again, maybe. So this is literally last week. Um, I, I'm like, ah, I'm just going to put an ad on Craigslist looking for a punk drummer. Um, if you're doing this for the money, this is not the gig for you. I straight up just, just looking to have fun. The next day, a guy yeah. responds to me and he lives in my neighborhood. He, he played warp tour played. Uh, he did, uh, America's got talent. He's like, dude, I'm looking for a band. I'm looking to jam. So not, this is all last week. So I got that dude. We jammed where I'm going to jam after this today. Um, I'm pr- I pretty much have a new four piece band, I think. And, um, all these songs that I did during quarantine now I'm going to start doing with, with humans. And I actually sat down with the drummer to play last week, randomly got together. We didn't, we weren't ready. Um, I didn't even know my songs yet that I've recorded. I'm like, shit. Uh, I actually don't know my lyrics. I haven't, cause I just <laughs> did these all in the box, did the songs this year. And then yeah, yeah. that was it. And so now I'm, when, when I get done with you, I have to actually go over three songs that we're going to work on today because I literally forgot um, just how to play them. So, but yeah, so I'm doing that. Um, I'm gonna just try to get a band going with no expectations. Just we, you know, we have a practice spot, and it's literally just to blow off steam. And if we start doing some gigs, great. If not, yeah. I don't care. I just, I just want to do it again. So, yeah, like I said, all those songs that I have, I've never done with humans, it's like I'm sitting down for the first time, and it's it, that's a really cool thing too. But I also get really close to them because I literally I did the bass lines, I did everything. So like finding, I, I have visions, so it's also I got to make sure that these guys are on board kind of following my vision, you know, not, not a hundred percent, but I know where I want these songs to be. And I, I can't also, I know my role, like they've got to be able to like, if they're doing something completely wrong, like playing the part way, they got to be able to play. Hey dude, play it the way I wrote it. <laughs> like they've got, and that not, every, that's not for everyone, but that's what, so right now I'm kind of feeling out these new guys. The drummer seems awesome. I'm going to go meet the guitar player and, and bass player like in a week and a half, I think. And then get that going. And then, um, but yeah, then I got my buddy Robbie Gold just working on a couple songs of his, and then Jody wants to do some stuff, and uh, I think that's it. Other than just like normal life stuff too going on, you know. Dude, I love this because <laughs> everything that you mentioned, you said like it was like a transformational, where it just seems like there was every aspect of your life just seemed to just like you grew a little bit, you change, and it's just like. And I can tell when you talk about this, you're really excited about because you're just like this is fucking awesome. And, and and I love seeing this because there, you know, you can pick up on a vibe and an energy of someone when you were like, hey, you know, I, I signed up for your class and we did like a call and we, you know, went over some stuff. It's so cool to see you taking the thing and running with it because it's one thing I think when people you know, I love what I do and I love, you know, Hey, here's the thing that I'm talking about. I love when people are like, interesting, awesome. They start doing it, but then they start looking for more and then they go with it where they're like, cool, that's the first step. That's going to get me to wherever I want to go here. And as you said, now I'm going to look for other things that are going to get me to the next step, the next step, the next step, the next step. And it's just going to be, it's just going to be a continuing journey. And dude, I'm so excited to see what you're doing. And if people are listening to this and they're like, Hey, I kind of want to work with Neil. Do you do some work for hire stuff? Like how can people get in contact with you? Absolutely. Um, well you can look me up. It's N E I L T U R K. Um, I mean, I guess on, I guess really my only avenues would be like Facebook. Um, if you have any, if you have any real estate inquiries too, (laughs) you could Neil Turk, just Google Neil Turk real estate, but I can, I can help you out with that. But, um, yeah, I don't, cause I don't have any, so like what I'm doing, 
with my little studio here, it's, I'm calling it it's tarantula studios because in the vocal booth, I have two tarantulas and then I have a Neumann set up. But so, but I don't have an official like page or anything. I'm just, you know, like I said, just things are organically just starting to happen a little bit. But, um, but I'm definitely, if it's stuff that I, I have time to do, I'm definitely open, you know, like, like I said, I'm trying to just say yes to stuff and kind of see where things, if there's something I realistically just don't have time for, I, I would just say up front, I really can't, but I'm definitely open to things. And if people have questions or, you know, they could definitely find me on Facebook and reach out to me and I'm happy to answer any questions or help if I can. Dude, Neil, love it. And I have a whole bunch of music though online under my name, Neil Turk, Top Shelf Liquors, L-I-C-K-R-S. That's my punk band for like 10 years. Um, I have a whole bunch of stuff. Even back in 2003, I had a punk band called the Potato Bugs. That I really like that stuff. Actually, that was like yeah, 2003. And then before that, Spotify wasn't around. The stuff I did before that, <laughs> I know it was just like we were all in LimeWire waiting yeah. for that one song to download, and it was just forever taking. They probably downloaded a million viruses to the home computer, but yeah. it was okay. It was good. We got half of the song. Yeah, in MySpace, all that uh, stuff. Dude. But- <laughs> oh, dude all of that but dude thank you for doing this this is awesome and i can't wait to see just all the shit that you're putting out that you're just going to keep on getting better and better thank you and dude i'm so proud of everything you're doing man i remember right when you started this podcast and like dude you've had some killer guests on and dude you are a natural talker like the way you talk to people like i was listening to just even some today i'm like man you gotta you just got a knack not everybody can do that and you just you got a knack for it man and you're doing really great i know you're busy with your production everything else you're doing but especially with the podcast stuff, man, you're you're killing it, dude. And uh, it's been an honor to be on it. All right. So you've heard Neil's story. And part of you is feeling like that could be me. I could start doing some of those things. And if you've ever felt limited by your guitar playing, you're not the only one. So many artists feel that they're stuck in a box, playing the same pattern, trying to run off the same material over and over. Sometimes you need to shake things up. You need different voicings, different strumming patterns, techniques, a different way of viewing your instrument. Stop trying to do this on your own. You're not meant to do it on your own. You need guidance, and that's why I created Rift Radio. So what I want you to do right now just head on over to songwritingforguitar.com, click courses, and enroll in Rift to Radio. As soon as you do, you can jump into those modules. You can join the private Facebook group, start connecting with other students, maybe possible co-writers. We've got some amazing live workshops that you will have a seat in. You won't be doing this on your own. You will have a community because believe me, that is what you need. So head on over to songwritingforguitar.com, click courses, and then enroll into Rift to Radio. And that does it for this week's episode. It was edited and produced by Chris Fafalius. I'm Mike Myers. Thanks for listening.